Hey guys, welcome back. I did the dashboard yesterday. It's all dried up. Like I said, a little bit of dirt in it. I'll wet sand that out. Turned out nice. Now I have to tape off the whole car really well so that I can paint the floor pans tonight. This is just gonna be a single stage paint. I'm probably only gonna do a couple coats. Um, if you see that little bit of cracking on the inside of the quarter panel, that is um, from the old um, texture that they put on there. I have a couple cans of chip guard. I'm going to spray some chip guard over that and re-single stage all over all that and the trunk floor and their floor. Um, all the holes in the quarter panel, tail lights, everything, I have to tape them off all out from the outside so that I keep the overspray from coming through and getting on the paint job. Um, the other, earlier today, I uh, took some 320 grit on a paint stick, just some normal 320 grit on a paint stick, and I knocked down this run real quick. So I've gotten it just about flat, a little tiny bit left right here. You could barely feel it. But I didn't want to take off too much with the 320 grit because I'm going to hit it again with 800 grit. The reason why I knocked this down a little bit is I wanted to get it, give it more time to dry now that I knocked off like a layer of the clear. It can breathe and it can start drying some more. Um, it did not really gum up on the sandpaper at all. It seemed to uh, do really well, so it's pretty dry. Um, I did try to use the razor blade trick first. What you do is if you tape both ends of the razor blade and if you put it on the ground here, you can see that there's a gap between the razor blade and the countertop. It's kind of hard to see on that. But by putting the tape on there, that leaves a little gap between the razor blade and the countertop. So what you do is if you have a run and you start scraping this along the paint job, it's only going to take the run out and the tape on each side is going to ride on the paint. But the thing is, is, with this run, it wasn't thick enough for that blade to catch the run. So it was kind of just gliding over the surface and not scraping it down at all. So that's why I went with the 320 grit. So I'm going to go ahead and get this taped off and then I'll come back and we will do some chip guard in there and start getting ready to paint the floors. Okay, I'm going to spray some raw rocker guard made by Duplicolor. I have this brand and I have a SEMS brand. I'm going to use this brand because I can paint over it in 10 minutes. The SEMS uh, Rocker Guard requires two to four hours before top coat. So I'm just going to do, this uh, is two to three light coats, light to medium coats. Okay, I uh, put three coats of that chip guard on. I can't tell if it covered all that cracking from the old stuff or not. Um, we'll just have to see, there's really not much else I can do. I was gonna bondo them all, but I was afraid if I bondo them all, I would have to put a filler primer on there because if I didn't, you would probably see like bands of where I bondoed over top of the cracks. And I just didn't want to have to put that much work into it. So hopefully this uh, rocker chip guard will, uh, you know, cover those up. So I got my paint mixed up here. This is a, it's a cheaper base. This is a cheaper single stage paint. This is uh, just a Nasson made by DuPont. Um, this is uh, the dumbest mixing ratio. Eight. So one to two, I believe. Yep. Eight parts paint, one part hardener, two parts reducer. So these mixing cups, none of the ones I have, I have two different brands of mixing cups. I have a PPG brand, and 
I have I have a PPG brand and a Auto Body Tool Bar brand. Neither one of these have an eight to one mixing ratio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it easy on myself. If you're just mixing it eight to one to two, you would have eight ounces, one ounce, which would make nine, plus two would make 11. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double that. So I'm going to go 16, 18, 22. So, and that will work out perfect because these cups hold about 22 ounces. But I'm going to do it in this cup because it's going to be easier, easier to read my ounces right here because on these cups, the ounces, which this is worn off, but these only come in like 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, all the way up to 600. So it'd be almost impossible to figure out that formula on this cup versus this one. And this one only goes up to seven to one to one. So that's not gonna help us out. So we're gonna use this cup. We'll do 16 ounces of color. I'm gonna put some gloves on because I have a feeling this stuff's gonna wanna stain everything. I didn't go with a real expensive uh, paint for the floors and stuff because it doesn't really matter. You do see the trunk, the side walls and stuff, and if you pull up the mat that goes on the floor, you'll be able to see underneath it, but it's not like, you know, people are really going to be pulling the mat up very often. They might just pull it up to look at it. And this color looks like it's wrong. Let me go check this. Okay, it's, it's okay. It's a little bit... A little bit more silvery, I think. Not as greenish. Uh, it'll be all right. I thought it was way off when I first opened it, but it's definitely different than uh, this color. It's what was mixed the first time when I started painting the car. It's hard to see this in the camera, but you can see the difference. This just got foam on it from being in the mixer. But we're all right. It'll be close enough. Poke my holes in the rim like I always do. We're not tack clothing it off or anything like that. I blew it out. I'm sure there's still some dirt in there. It is what it is. So I'm going to go 16 ounces of paint. Two ounces of hardener. I'm more worried about the trunk paint being nice than the floor pans inside the car. So I'm going to put two coats of paint in the trunk first. Whatever I have left over, I'll kind of just blow it over the, the uh, floors in the car itself. So two ounces of this, which will bring it to 18, and then four ounces of reducer. It's going to bring us up to 22. Another thing I'm going to do, I'm going to spray the side walls first, you know, of what I can see. Do all the sides first, and then I'm going to wait like 10 minutes, and I'm going to do the sides a second coat, and then I'll do the floor next, because if for some reason I have to lean in there on the floor or something like that to get into the sides real good, I'll still be able to do it after the first coat.
afraid. It was real hard to try to video this, but it doesn't look too bad. Kind of hard to see in the video. this plastic on the body tonight. Tomorrow morning I'm going to cover the floor and the trunk area and paint the convertible rack satin black and the front frame rails and stuff like that satin black. Um, after that I can unmask the whole car and it's ready to I'll probably get the motor and stuff in it before I put before I start wet sanding and buffing. I'm not sure yet. Like I said the motor's coming on Sunday. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or not. If I put the motor in first, I'll just have to make sure I blast everything off so that when I wet sand and buff, I don't get a bunch of dust on the motor. Um, tomorrow, after I paint the set in black, I'm going to start wet sanding the doors and the trunk lid. I'm not going to do the front clip yet. I just want to get the doors and trunk lid done so that uh, I can get those on the body. And then I'll do the front clip afterwards. So that's going to end this video, guys. If you're liking what you're seeing, please like and subscribe. And if you guys have any questions or anything like that, feel free to send me a message. I'll do my best to try to answer them for you. Um, I don't always have the right answers, but I can try to help you guys out if you have some questions. So you guys have a good night, and I will see you tomorrow.